So, so uh, do you hear me well? Let's go a little confirmation. Okay, good. Um, all right. So, uh, I'm going to try to make this uh, quick since we have like a um, hopefully no problems happening. Uh, yes, yes, there is a, like a, a guest talk right after this. And um, they all, they all, I will have only a small demo, nothing like really uh, involved, since um, there are a few frameworks that can be used with uh, smart contracts, and each one of them has its own like uh, testing, but it's not difficult to follow. Like um, um, Anyway, so let's start. Uh, so this tutorial is about the smart contract testing to ensure like the usability and security of the smart contract. The issue is, uh, of course, testing is always important in in uh, in software uh, development. But when it comes to smart contract in particular, this is testing is like extra important, and that's because once you deploy a smart contract on the main uh, main net or on the public blockchain, blockchain it's in, it, it cannot be changed. Almost impossible to change it anymore. So if there are, sorry, that is an issue. Did someone talk? Um, sorry. Okay. So if there is some issue, just you can um, alert me just like stop talking right away because i cannot see you i uh, cannot see your messages anyway we're just saying that once you deploy a smart contract to like uh, the blockchain you cannot change it anymore so the idea that in normal software development we can just like uh, fix vulnerabilities once we discover them uh, but this is not possible with smart contracts uh, so it's extra it's extra important to test the, smart contracts beforehand, before deploying them, and um, like comprehensively, so that like uh, you, you got you know, um, uh, to have no issues and security uh, security risks. And uh, just to, like uh, here as a, um, to tell you like the, how big of an issue this, like an, an estimate of how much, uh, like because the smart contracts also handle a lot of, a lot of um, financial um, value. It's uh, like issues with uh, regarding security defects in the smart contract have are estimated to cause like a loss of more than one billion dollars, uh, and this includes like high profile, like the DAO hack, for example, the one that happened in Ethereum in 2016, and and was resulted in um, uh, required a hard fork. If you know this story or not, but it's like a, there is a basically a vulnerability in a in a smart contract, in the, the DAO smart contract, uh, a reentrancy security vulnerability that was exploited. Uh, and uh, resulted in a loss of like uh, uh, billions of Ethereum, e e of Ether, sorry, which is like a cost, like a equals to like billions, of, uh, like a billion of dollar, I think. Yeah, it's written here, what's a billion dollars right now. And um, yes, so to fix that, they they had to make a hard fork, basically changing like the history, uh, the branch of of the Ethereum blockchain. And um, this happened in 2016. So this is really important, what I'm saying. Uh, so, uh, OK. Um, so this is the importance of testing smart contracts. It's just like uh, reiterating what I just said. They manage high value financial assets. That's why we need uh, like uh, to test them for errors. The rigorous testing can help us like um, uncover the defects early before like deploying them the main net. And um, yeah, so I can avoid security risk. And uh, yeah, as I said, as I you can notice that here, I said it's once deployed, it's almost impossible to change the code. That's because there are R in principle. This is something like you, you this is nothing, nothing like um, just to know this about this. Uh, there are ways to upgrade the contract 
basically um, like kind of replacing it uh, or like calling an, a, a contract from a contract basically but or as what happened with the DAO attack having like a, a fork but this is, it requires a consensus, consensus from the community, which is not easy to accomplish. So this is not, basically it's not an option or like a, it's a very, it's not available. So focus on that if the smart contract once deployed, it cannot be changed. And you have to guarantee that it, it, it works as expected and it doesn't have uh, exploitable security risk. Anyway. So this is just about um, moving on to the types of smart uh, contract testing. So there are basically two methods or like two major methods or two uh, approaches. It's like there is the automated testing. This is the one that includes the uh, unit testing that you are familiar with, the unit testing and integration testing. These are automated testing uses tools or scripts to uh, to check the smart contract code. Uh, there is another type of testing, which is a manual. And this one is like a uh, human aided and um, includes things like uh, testing, uh, like uh, the contract on a local blockchain or, uh, I can sorry, this, sorry. Uh, or on, a, on the test, test net. Um, um, okay, uh, so, right, um, just, uh, like, uh, moving on to the unit testing, the one that we are, like, this is something that you're familiar with in the, your normal software development, it's, um, so unit testing is evaluates, uh, component by component, so each component make sure that it works, you test it, that it works correctly. Um, like test function by function, right? Um, so and in a good uh, unit test, it has to be simple, quick to run, and it's clear, it could provide a clear, a clear idea of what went to wrong. So it has to be, have logging and like uh, uh, right um, um, messages, like uh, for what, what, what's wrong, what happened. Um, and of course, the unit tests are useful for like checking that the functions return the expected values. Um, they like uh, that the storage, the contract storage, like is updated correctly after the the like the 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 run of the function had uh, resulted in the in the right in the expected outcome. And of course, if, uh, for good testing, like you can write this and you can test after each uh, like uh, push, for example, uh, you can see like uh, that if you change the code or part of the code, like you don't have like doesn't reduce errors. Um, so. So yeah, so what are the guidelines to 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 do unit you know, testing? Um, like to write a good like uh, unit test for for your code or for a smart contract, you have to understand the like the logic, the workflow of the the contract itself. What the contract is trying to do, and this is particularly important when you are writing the happy pass test. Like what is like when the Happy pass test is that just like uh, when the code is doing what it's supposed to do, like the scenario that you're expecting it to be used for. So you, if you have like, a, uh, for example, a, a smart contract that is like, a, um, let's say it's um, expecting like uh, the has a, a code that's expected, for example, it's a bedding uh, uh, contract. So people will use the function for let's say it's a bedding function where they used to enter like uh, their uh, uh, their their bed. Uh, so it's uh, expecting a number in a particular range and then um, 
So, and okay, it's when is it in the like expected scenario? Does it work? Is this in the way you expect it to do? Um, so, with the like the expected input, and does it uh, produce the expected output basically? But also, uh, the next thing to do, sorry, is that you have to um, also test for the negative. Uh, negative scenarios like when the input is wrong uh, and for that of course when you write your functions you have to like if you have an input you want to assert like within the function that it is the right kind you can write an assert for example an assert uh, use an assert to inside the function to be uh, uh, to to ensure that the input is correct and in the test, uh, the guideline is that you have to trigger every require or assert in your code. So this is like, this is just from like one of these guidelines, uh, uh, this like uh, Molsch guide guide for um, for writing uh, testing for smart contracts. You can see this. Let me just show you. So you can open it here somewhere. Yeah. So. So this is like a developed guide for testing smart contracts. And uh, you can see like uh, the guidelines to, to do is just like, you should follow like the ROI, let you repeat yourself and um, uh, like trigger every required assert. Uh, yeah, so test boundary conditions. Uh, so these are like, uh, guidelines to follow you can you can take a look at this like in the in the friends um and of course uh, uh okay another thing is that in the unit testing they have to uh like uh, measure your code coverage you have to like you want to cover most of your code you have you want to that your tests are running most of the code so like you are not missing any part of it Another thing is that um, you can will use a well-developed testing framework. So all the frameworks that you can you, you're using you're using for like writing and deploying smart contracts like Brownie, Hub Hat, Truffle, all of these, even Remix, all of these have their own um, um, testing for frameworks. Like for example, Brownie uses PyTest from Python um, to to run a unit test. Um, so you ha you can use that and you can see like uh, these are references to like tutorials or like uh, guides to to doing the test for Brownie and Hat. -Hat. So you can just look that up for whatever like your what so whatever framework you're using. Um, and next we can actually see this in Remix. But let me let's just finish uh, like talking about like. Uh, there is not much left. Uh, so, like, uh, you know, integration testing. So, integration testing is different from unit testing um, uh, because it evaluates uh, like uh, components together. So, I don't know, the smart contract as a whole, and it detects issues that come from like running functions together from the same contract, but also uh, like uh, cross uh, cross contract. Uh, calls from inheritance or like a dependency injection from other contracts. This is from for integration uh, testing. Um, so this is property testing. This is like uh, another thing that maybe uh, you'll not use, but uh, the thing is that there are tools basically you can use to <clears throat> to check that um, that a smart contract has a particular property. Uh, for example, that uh, one of the security risks that uh, you can have in a smart contract that you have like a, an asthmatic, uh, like a, sorry, um, an overflow, you know, because like uh, uh, your data types in, in uh, you can use in Solidity, for example, is like uh, unsigned integer is like up to uh, like um, a particular number and once you can have an overflow because of arithmetic operations this can introduce security risk and uh, you can test that your contract doesn't have this 
I will have like a that a sweet cooperation don't have overflow or underflow. You can test this with the tools. It's called property testing and um, and property testing, like uh, there are two common techniques to do this, like statics testing and static analysis and dynamic analysis. Uh, so uh, static analysis basically just like takes the code as is, they don't run it, they just test like um, analy analyze the code um, uh, as is. And you can see this like, uh, I mean, if you're using VS code, for example, you can like, uh, you have this in like you can uh, sorry you can uh, download and activate like uh, uh, extensions that like for example check the syntax for example for like whatever language you're programming language you're using these are called basically lenses or these are static analysis that tell you errors that from in syntax like an error so when you're like using a function that was not defined or something like that so these are just like the, um, they, so, of course, they don't provide uh, a deep um, analysis, but uh, I mean, they're helpful. The dynamic analysis, on the other hand, they actually run the code for multiple, for all possible passes or scenarios. And uh, for, there are different, um, so for example, Brownie has a tool for this. Uh, I haven't actually uh look that so much it's just like uh like i'm telling you about the possibility or the existence of this um okay so after this uh so yes we can look at uh writing unit testing in remix um a little bit just a very simple contract um and so is there any questions so far Am I going too far, too, too fast, or too slow? Okay, so let me talk about the question. So I have here a simple contract uh, called counter. It's just to basically, it has like a one uh, state variable called count. And I have two external functions, um, increment and decrement, basically they either increase or decrease this count. And uh, of course, it's for unit testing, I can write um, like a, a, a unit test for a function of this. To do that, like I have, like limit as I told you, like they have this plugin for um, unit testing. So just like, look, test here and you will see this. And you can activate it. I already activated it. And you can go here once you have it and generate, but I already have one. So generate uh, like the testing um, code. Uh, so it has so it's a boiler bl uh, blade, blade um, code. Can even run it and see. Um, and uh, see, wait, she's not on the test. Computer is freezing a little bit, so I 
I'm sorry. Uh, so uh, let me just stop sharing for a bit. Uh, meanwhile, like if anyone has a question. Um, Um, okay, so is that the question? Uh, okay, so Fanuel is asking, like, um, is the test uh, a separate contract? It's not a contract, actually. The unit test here. Um, can see if I will open the code right now. Can see it just. Um, it's a framework that is using like uh okay it's um well actually yeah it's a, it's, a, it's a contract it's a separate contract that's true um all right so and we'll share i will share the files yes but i mean i didn't try this it's already uh available okay just let me um take a look i can find uh, so yeah, so let me just try to share again. No, it runs separately, panel. This like this code runs separately. And actually, um one second, just let me um, So here, okay, let me just check that. Um, so I still have the contract here. And the file. So you can see, yes. So this is actually a contract. Several ones, so. Are okay, so all right. Um, um, it might like I might be cut off again because remix apparently just um uh causes my Firefox to with the with the meeting with the meet and the remix uh, my Firefox is struggling. All right, so um. As you can see here, I was asking Fanwell. So, uh, <clears throat> so this is this is actually a contract, right? It's like uh, it's all generated by by Remix. It's um, this is like a boilerplate uh, testing contract, and I'm just going to. Um, um, so it's a test suit contract, and I'm gonna use it to test my uh, my counter contract here. So uh, first, I will um, okay. So to so these are just like uh, the tests here are um, just like nonsense like uh, I just, this is not what i want to i have to write my own and to do that i will just like um i have to call my contract here and i will define 
inside before all. This is like we run before all other tests. Uh, I like deleted the, the code that was here. And uh, I will define a, a counter. Okay. And then um, I can define a function to test one of like a, a here. I have two functions increment and decrement and ink and uh, okay and I like uh, I can call like let's say um, the test ink for example or check let's say we using like check think this is like the the convention here so so what i what what do i want to to check so my my function here increases the counter by one right and if i define my contract if i call my contract without any um well my count starts from zero basically so if i call this function once I should get one, like the count should get one, should be one. So uh, I can check that, that it does this correctly. So um, like basically I have to call the function in here. And then um, I can assert uh, that assert equal that counter the counter count this is the variable right um is equal to one right and then i can make um like um count one I, this is like a a message that should be equal to one and um okay i can uh, and i can delete the rest of this um Okay, now I I run it and yeah, I can see that pass. Um, Okay, so of course, like uh, to get like a failed, um, you can change like this and see if I will get a failure or not. Like, of course, it's nothing I will get when I went on bound. Uh, yeah, so so you see, there are not that the count should, should be equal to one. Ah, well, okay, I, and this is a nonsense, of course, it should be one, but, uh, and my, my, my contract is working, but, uh, sorry, I have to close this for now. Anyway, um, sorry, so, yeah, I'm sorry about this. Uh, uh, okay. All right. Um, so basically, that's it. You want, if you want to write the unit codes, unit tests, sorry, you have to just like add 
uh, all the functions that you want to test. And uh, we have to think about like all of the um, like the possible, uh, as I said, like the right input that the one that expected to see that you are getting the right answers, the right uh, the expected output. But also you can think that once you have like a wrong input, does your like what the, does your function uh, like um, uh, functions or does your contract um, handle them the way they need to be handled? Okay, uh, so I'm sorry about the demo that it wasn't like more involved, but um, yeah, so any questions? Okay, so yeah, as a discussion, I'm, I was just reading a discussion between Samuel and Natrola in the comments. And uh, yeah, so the whole point of this is that, like, if we are doing this before deploying the, the smart contract, so you don't have to worry about this. Um, um, like we're just testing like the the logic of the code. There's nothing um, except. So I don't think like you have to. Um, if I'm, maybe I'm I'm mistaking. Like what is the not the goal of this question? Anyway. Um, So if there is, uh, I will assume that like the silence means that everything is clear or everything is like um, super confusing that so no one, like, no one have like uh, can think about how to ask questions about it. Anyway, um, more if uh, there are more questions or anything you want to ask about, there are, like um, you can ask on Slack. Um, of course, like they either said that depending on the framework you are using, you should use the testing framework there. Um, like um, you are choosing one of the three, you have to use the testing framework there. Um, um, there are like um, resources available for like how to do that in each one, and it's like not easy, it's not hard to follow. Anyway, so we can end this uh, here, I think. And, uh...